Hi, this is Michael McDougall. I'm sitting in for Lisa Smith on Southern Exposure, and we're delighted to have you with us as we're going to talk some rather interesting medical subjects, and uh, you may find that you have family members that in one way or another might become involved in some of the things that we're going to talk about. But let's say right off the bat that there have been concussions of the brain probably as long in history as some man learned to pick up a big stick. And uh, the way these were treated has changed dramatically, but most dramatically in the last 10 to 20 years. Prior to that, there was always something that someone could do for you, but today it's amazing what they can do for you. And because we live in a true medical community, uh, I think you may be surprised at how much can be done for you. In order to find out, our special guest tonight is uh, Dr. Chad Wagner. Uh, Chad is a native of Marietta. He has spent a good bit of time in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, but has worked his way back with the Harbin Clinic to Rome, Georgia, where he's involved in a program that's been around for a while, but let's a little bit more about it. If you have a son, a daughter, or a friend involved in some of our high school athletics, there's a good chance that one day something bad will happen, maybe a brain concussion. And if it does, this is a good man to know. He's into sports medicine, and it's Chad Wagner. Chad, we're glad to have you. And uh, why is it good to know you? Because that's a pretty bad thing to happen. Well, I think it's a good thing to know a doctor who knows what they're doing when dealing with concussions. Concussions can be very scary events when they happen during a practice or a game, particularly when it's your loved one, uh, your uh, daughter, your son, granddaughter, grandson. Uh, when they get knocked out or when they get injured and hit in the head and they're dizzy and they're confused, it can be pretty scary for parents, it can be scary for coaches, it can be scary for friends. And it's important to have someone who knows how to assess and manage those concussions and be able to speak the right language and be able to give as much information as they can about how uh, to manage these and what the expected outcome is and how to protect these kids from getting um, uh, worse concussions or more symptoms. Now, we're not talking about just rough and tough football. It happens in baseball, happens in soccer, wrestling, could happen in almost any contact sport. That's correct. Uh, football is certainly the highest, uh, has the highest rate of concussions of any sports, but mainly that's because there are more athletes who play football than almost any other sport. Interestingly enough, soccer um, and gymnastics, as long, along with cheerleading, have probably the highest rates per student, but they don't have as many students or athletes as football does. And you can imagine with soccer, cheerleading, wrestling, uh, and some of these, they don't wear helmets, and they don't wear pads, and they're landing on hard surfaces. Well, is just simply putting on a helmet the answer to it? No. Interestingly enough, helmets are very, very good at what they do. And what they do is prevent skull fractures. There's not been a helmet that's currently on the market uh, that is widely used that has been shown to prevent concussions. Well, you and I were talking about this one day recently, and I think you kind of related it to maybe an egg that you might protect the shell, but that stuff inside's gonna jar. Talk, let's talk about that. Exactly, so a concussion is uh, an injury to the brain that occurs from a blow to either the the head uh, or the body or just a sudden twist and what happens is like an egg you have the shell which is the cranium or the bones of the skull um, and the brain inside and when that force occurs it shakes the brain uh, and that shaking scrambles the inside of the of the egg or if a snow globe you take a snow globe and shake it all the pieces of snow go up in the air it takes and so but the the uh, shell or the snow globe is not broken. The concussion is a functional uh, disturbance of how the brain operates. So it's a shaken uh, brain that then does not operate the way it's supposed to. Uh, the blood flow patterns change, the way that it uses certain uh, minerals, the uh, way that it uses sugar in a certain way causes uh, the brain to slow down and then you get the symptoms that occur with the concussion. Okay, I can see that probably in addition to having somebody that knows how to give it initial treatment, there's a timeliness. I mean, you can't wait around 
six or eight hours and then look into it, I got a feeling that you need immediate attention if there is a concussion. But a lot of sandlot baseball and football is played out here on a field. No doctors around, no ambulance. What do we do? What should we do? Well, the first thing you start with is you just educate the parents and the coaches. And you let them know that concussions are, are serious, uh, that they should be aware of some of the signs and symptoms of the concussions. Because you're right, you know, I'm not going to be at every sporting event. Uh, I may be at some football games. I may be at some wrestling, ga some wrestling tournaments. Uh, and even though we have very good athletic trainers at the high schools, at every high school uh, in this county, they still can't be at some of the events in the middle school or at some of the sandlot events. So you first start by just educating the parents and the coaches about what the signs and symptoms of concussions are. You're right, it's important to recognize what happened and recognize what the signs of the concussion would be. And then it is important that they be evaluated. And it's sometimes important that they need to be evaluated right away. If the parent is concerned because of the symptoms, such as they're not able to move an arm or a leg, uh, that they had seizures, that they lost consciousness for a long period of time, which only occurs in about 10% of concussions, uh, those things should be evaluated at a, probably at an emergency room or a doctor's office if they're still open. But those are things that are, uh, are very serious, and those should be evaluated by somebody who knows what they're doing with concussions. Well, now, I grew up in a world, played high school football, and uh, macho was the big thing. You had to be rough and tough, and your coach was rough and tough, and he said, oh, shake it off, little man, shake it off, little man. But you don't shake off a brain no, you don't. And that's one of the things that we're trying to educate coaches um, and parents uh, in particular about, and doctors as well. Um, the only way to get a concussion to, to resolve is rest. Uh, and it's important to know that any time where they, an a impact occurs on an athlete or they hit their head and they have a headache or nausea or dizziness or trouble with light or trouble remembering, or just feeling overly sad or overly tired, those are all signs of a concussion. It doesn't have to be just a headache. They don't have to lose consciousness. And those are serious, um, those are serious signs and symptoms that we can uh, identify and that we should be looking for when this occurs. And you can't just shake it off. The brain will take time to heal. To think that most kids, when they get this, uh, their feeling is, well, I got to get back in the game. I, I got to go, oh, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to get back in that game. But th that's not what they should do. No, you're exactly right. That's why we try to take the, that responsibility away from the athlete. We try to educate the athletic trainers who are at the game to say, you're responsible for making this decision. It is not the athlete's responsibility. It's not the parent's responsibility. It's not the coach's responsibility that is the athletic trainer or the doctor who is present to, to make this decision. Now, if there is no athletic trainer or doctor present, then it is the coach's responsibility and the parent's responsibility. That, that child or that athlete has had a head injury. They can't make the right decision. They can't make a decision for themselves. You have to take that um, out of the equation. Well, let's, let's do an example. We're, we're out at uh, uh, one of the fields here, about three miles out. Good chance that there is a medical doctor there. Good chance. Uh, I think they, they sort of plan that in the city and county schools, don't they? Mm -hmm. To at least have a coaching doctor. I mean, a, not a coaching doctor, but a doctor. Mm -hmm. But probably uh, once it's recognized that it's happened to some degree, probably an ambulance? Actually, no. Um, most of concussions will resolve on their own and they won't require any tests or imaging to look at the brain itself. But how do you know? Well, that's a very good question. What you do is you monitor what the symptoms look like. So I say that if, if you have a doctor there who knows what they're doing and how to look for the signs and symptoms of concussion, that's the, the best way uh, to be able to know what's going on. And then you I educate the parents and the trainers and the athletic staff and the coaches to know what are the warning signs of something really terrible that needs to have an ambulance. Now, if somebody gets knocked out and is unconscious for several minutes, that's something that probably needs to get evaluated at an emergency room. If you have somebody who shows that they can't move one side of their body, or has seizures, or has lots of nausea and vomiting, um, or has an inability to see, those are signs that they need to be taken to the emergency room to look for something worse, or something that uh, could be going on in the brain that would be, be beyond a concussion. But a concussion has a fairly 
predictable sort of uh, list of symptoms that occur that I encourage, I, tra I try to educate my parents about and the athletic trainers to know that if these things occur, that it's a concussion, the athlete does not need to go back to play that game, that they need to be evaluated by a doctor who knows how to manage concussions, probably within uh, one to three days, depending on how quickly that can happen, um, and that they need to take what's called an impact test, uh, which is a, a, pr a computerized test that measures how well the function of the brain, how, the, how well the brain is functioning. 